Hello! I just remembered that I still haven't introduced myself properly in English. My name is Mike, 38 years old, IT service technician by profession. I started doing chip level repairs about two and a half years ago and have been expanding my skills ever since. About 10 weeks ago, I started this YouTube channel just to pay back what I learned from others and in the hope that people would like it. And yes, looking at my so-called achievements, over 1000 views, 100 hours of playback time and over 60 followers in this short period of time. I'm really satisfied. By the way, guys, if you have any suggestions for improving my content, please write them in the comments. If you have a question or don't understand something, don't be afraid to write it in the comments. And seriously, a big, big sorry for my bad English. I'm sure you have something to laugh about in between. <laughs> That's okay with me. Uh, so, enough of that now. And let's move on to the next repair. We have a new device today. Uh, HP model HP Pavilion X360 convertible model 14 minus DW0177NG. And it came in with no picture. Um, it was already opened before, for sure. We have even the wrong screw here. This is not the correct screw and also this is all loose, the rubber here. Well, let's see what we have with our no picture device. Pretty nice, pretty recent. Intel Core i7. And yeah, the screen is already bit weird but I can't see a crack or something like that so seems to be fine however I have a, a, a clearly visible dent uh, yeah clearly visible dent which uh, if I remember correct wasn't mentioned before maybe I have a transport damage here Hopefully not. Let's see what we have here. Charger. So let's plug it in. Orange LED is lighting up. So it is charging. When I press the power button, white light comes on. Fans spin up for a short while. And that's all. Caps lock does not work. looks intact here too HDMI intact USB-C intact okay so so well it has I can already notice it has backlight missing and now it just goes off okay reboot it has backlight missing just backlight missing I can see the HP logo. Yeah, yeah, you can see it too, maybe. However, okay, okay. Yeah, let's look what we have inside. So this is finally another kind of issue. The device is actually working, but we just have no picture. Let's shut it down. 
Ja. Okay. So, the first thing we'll do is to inspect the LCD connector. But first we remove the battery, so we have no... This is the wrong screw. This is probably the screw which belongs to be outside of the case. Need another bit. Maybe this one. This one, this one, so missing backlight, so the picture is actually present but very very dim, sometimes you even need the lighter to see anything, but um, responding ca caps lock is uh, in 1990 percent of the cases a uh, pretty sh sure sign that uh, it's just display issue. So let's remove the connector. Can't see anything obvious. Also, the connector was really straight. Really, does this is okay? Let's check again. Let's check again. What is now? Takes really long to boot. Here, yeah, okay. Keyboard. Touch keyboard is present. So still no picture. Hmm. Maybe like that. This is a good thing with this convertibles. But we can rotate the display so good. Okay, 19 volt. Let's check whether we have 19 volt. Okay. 90 volt at the connector. Maybe. Ooh, the heatsink is pretty hot. Okay. Probably here. This is 3.3 and you can't see anything. Like that maybe. So we have some outer lines here. This is 3.3. Yes. So this is the fuse input side. We have 3.3. Also 3.3 and maybe this is a main power rail. No, 3.3 and 3.3. So where are my 19 volts? Where are they? 3.3 again. 
Where are my 19 volts? 3.3. Am I measuring the wrong connector here? What do we have here? 1.8. And here? Nothing. And here? Almost nothing. Okay. It seems I have to remove the camera connector again since I can't see where my main power rail is present on the connector. Which is pretty weird. Usually it's pretty clear, but this time, this time not. I want to check what we have at this transistor here. 3.3, 3.3, 3 .3, 3 .3, 3 .3. this is probably ground, 3.3, and 3.3, so here's, this is probably the three volts for the LCD, but we also also need the 19 volts for the LCD for the panel. So I'm a bit confused right now. Why this big rail here? Three point three. Three point three. This is confusing. I don't like what we have here. Let's check the connector on the microscope. So, question is now, what is what? So, we check at this fuse and we are 3.3. We check this fuse and we are 3.3. We have checked this fuse and I think we have 3.3 here. Maybe we'll check again. So and usually one of the big power rails is actually the 19 volts. But uh, it is completely missing here for some reason. which I don't understand. Okay, let's check again. Maybe this is just some kind of another des design here. Okay, so without display connected, there's a power button here. Okay, so now we check voltages without display. So once again, here we have 3.3, what do we have here? Nothing, nothing, what is this, nothing, these are data lines here, for sure, What's that, nothing, 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 what's that? Ah, 13 volt. 13 volt here. Okay, which means our main power rail is actually 13 volts instead of 19 volts. So called NVDC design and if it it, if this is true, uh, the mainboard side, side can be fine actually. But it can also be we have the enable missing. The backlight enable. So then, so the next question is how can we find out? Is it a bad cable by any chance? Can be. 
we'll see later. So however, once again, have to make sure where the 19 volt is. Okay, it is on. Ground. So where was it? Was it here? No, it was the second one here. Here, 13 volt, right to the left of this fuse here. Okay? So now we do the following. So we have it easier. We just scrape this a bit so we can actually measure directly to this rail at this rail here. Maybe like that. Should be already enough. Okay? So once again, connector, so yeah, our marking is still visible, power, power, ground, and now I check this point here, and we have 13 volts which is actually fine, so the display is not shorter, and now it's, uh, the next step will be the hard one. Unfortunately, I really hoped it is much easier. We have to find out, uh, in best case, where the backlight enable is, and uh, whether it is up and stable. And uh, just in case it is not, we have, of course, to check the display side, whether we have an issue there. So let us check now. Yeah, and uh, it was indeed a very hard part to find out something about the connector. Um, we have no schematics available, like almost always, uh, but uh, we are lucky. We have um, the actual data sheet of the panel. So uh, let's have a look. Although it's, uh, it seems like it is reversed, um, isn't important right now. Um, I've already um, compared some things and we have indeed uh, the second um, we count from 30. 30 is for, for us the one. And so uh, pin 2, 3, 4 and 5 is backlight power. And uh, this fits so far. Um, Six and seven are not connected. This fits also. Now let us check the backlight power. And of course, backlight enable and the PVM, PWM signal. So power. The PVM signal, PWM signal, where we have 3.3 volts here, which is pretty bad for us. And then we have the backlight enable, and we have almost no voltage here, 0.665 volts, which is actually a missing backlight enable signal. Um, yeah, and this is very likely a motherboard issue. Let's check resistance to ground here. This one resistance to ground and we have 70 kilo ohms which is also fine so we can only hope for something like a failed transistor or similar and we have to follow the line from here backwards. Let's check for continuity to the connector side of the motherboard. Power is removed, yeah. Always without power. Each play with the connector is always without power because you can instantly burn the PCH when you play with the connector while the, the device is powered. Okay, so let's check. How can I show like that? Maybe. So, yeah, beep mode. 
here is a point. And then we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, seventeen. This is pin seventeen and it's beeping. So let's have a look at the motherboard. Pin seventeen. Maybe we find something useful to work with. Did I switch? No, I did not switch. Ah, uh, yep. Now you haven't seen. We have to remove the board. And this is what we we'll do now. So here is a connector. So okay, pin seventeen, yes. Where was it? I think it was this one here, yes? So, beep mode. And then we'll check other side of the board and I found the diode here. Okay, found the diode. Yeah, okay. So let's check here. Here, this diode, here it goes from the other side of the board here. So let's just let's check the diode here. One zero point six and two point five which is a good value. What do we have here? A three kilo ohms resistor, and here a hundred kilo ohms resistor. So this is ground. This is the line here. Keep mode. This ball is connected. This is ground. But this is connected and here we have maybe a pull-up resistor, something like that. So I've connected the display. Now I re rotate the board like that. Here, let's try it like that. Yeah, should be fine. So now the only thing we have to do is to give power, and then. We have to find out how we can start it from the keyboard connector. Because the power button is inside of the keyboard, yes. Yes, it is in the keyboard. So yeah, we have to look at the keyboard connector. From this side, this is one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, nope, eight, nine, ten, 
11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, we try 13 and 14, but uh, first we check whether there is ground by any chance. Uh, let's remove power. No? Okay. Let's check where is ground at the connector. Can I show you? Maybe like that. Okay. Let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, twelve is indeed ground, so I'm pretty sure twelve and thirteen is especially thirteen is for power on the device. So yeah, this is what we try now. No, it does not come on. So we have to get to uh, go the safe way. We put it back. So we went so we can connect the keyboard. But also check uh, voltages at the same time. Not so easy, my friends. So we have uh, to check pin for pin, which pin goes down when I press the power button. Pin for pin. So we need good ground. Maybe I use something else for ground. Yeah, this will work. Okay. So now you can f that you can follow. Like that, yeah? Okay. So I was especially interested in pin pin thirteen to one two three. Where's the power button here? Okay. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And when I press the power button, hmm, did I count it wrong or what? Don't have power here. Here I have power. Okay. No idea what was going on. One, nothing. Two, nothing. Three, has no power. Four, nothing. Five has no power. Six has no power. Seven, nothing. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Funny, no, no voltage here anymore. Interesting. Here. Yeah. This one is a power button. Wonderful. Once again, this is 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, 14. It is 14. Okay? This is... Mm, this is how you find the power button of the device. So you can power it on even without the keyboard. So it is 14. Now we remove the board again. Maybe we just check whether we have ground near because 14 is really much inside of the connector. Uh, let's go with deep mode. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. No beep or what? No. Okay, this is fourteen, thirteen, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, okay, 12. So basically we can power it on with uh, shorting pin 12 and pin 14 together. This is all we want to know. So now we make some progress and can check some voltages, okay? What's that? What is that here? Come on. the connector of the display with power present. Just saying. So now we have this wonderful device here. has power. And we know the pinout. So so now we know the pinout and we can power on the board by simply shorting 12 and 14 together. So one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and it is on. Fan is running now. The keyboard, so we know. When it is actually posting, and it actually does a post. Let's wait a second, and then we'll check what's going on here. So the device has done the post. Now we can check for voltages. Ground. So, what do we have here? So, 0 0.6. 0 0.6. Here's ground. This is a pull, pull down resistor. 0 0.6. 0 0.6. 0 0.6. 0 0.6. 0 0.6. 0 0.6. 0 0.6. 0 0.6. 0 0.6. 0 0.6. 0 0.6. 0 0.6. 0 0.6. 0 0.
0.6. Okay, so now the interesting. What do we have on the other side of the diet? Only thirty three millivolts. Here we have three point volts. So the issue is on this side of the diode, we don't have enough enough voltage here. So the uh, voltage here will, will be pulled low. Because here we only have almost nothing. But here we have 0.6 volts and here we have even 3.3 volts. So this is not the issue here. Here at, on this side is the issue. Let's uh, try to uh, inspect further. Maybe we find something. This rail here, it's the middle rail here, it goes here. So what do we have on the other side? What do we have on the other side? All right. This one, no, here. It is My sister here. It is actually this pin here. It's this. Let's open it a bit. Just enough. We have access to the copper. This via here. And this via goes inside of the board. So we we'll, we have an inner layer. So now again. Let's check for continuity. One probe here. And one probe to the diode. Yeah, yeah. and it beeps. Yeah. So this is our backlight enable on the other side of the diode. And now, yeah, we have to find out to where it goes. To where does it go? Horrible. Horrible. Probably maybe near the PCH. Something, hopefully a test point, something like that. There are many test points. Many test points near the PC edge. I try to touch everything in this area without luck so far. So where, where, what is that? This is PDM controller has probably nothing to do with backlight enable. Pretty sure it goes directly into the PCH. No, no luck. No luck. Okay, we have still the second side. Give me the paper towel so we don't have a mess afterwards. Let's rotate the boards. Okay. So here we have also many components near the PCH. Maybe we are lucky here. here. So diet. And now again we check, we try to check everything, each test point, each resistor, but just nothing doing when nothing else doing than to touch everything with the probes. And hopefully we'll find a point. 
where peeps Use a small transistor. No. No luck so far. This is nothing. This is nothing. bad this is very bad don't find anything don't find anything okay after some uh, further investigation I find something out I find a connection from the diode to exactly this it is beeping this resistor near the M controller and after even more inspection what this could be I'm pretty sure this has something to do with the lid switch so actually I'm thinking we have just a lid switch issue so um, I think I've already found it on the subboard no not this one here this small guy here and um, when I put my probes between here and here it is already beeping with 14 ohms internal resistance which doesn't sound pretty healthy um, lid switch voltage should be present even without display connected so I think we should just check what voltage to voltages do we get here because I'm pretty sure this one is shorter to ground let's check again we have one pin this one is ground this one is open probably 3.3 and this one this one has is, is shorted with 14 ohms to ground but I'm pretty sure this one has to be connected to the is uh, to the M controller and has to um, yeah hand over a signal so we get a high on the diet we measured a low before so just let's just check with voltage maybe so DC so here we have 0.697 so this is actually the connection to the diet this is n almost nothing and this is ground we already know so this here this is 0.698 Let's check for continue. Let's remove power and check for continuity to the diet. No, we don't have continuity because it's probably driven via the M controller. But I'm pre pretty sure we have something here. Uh, let's check for another lid switch. We have a board with another lid switch and now we'll remove it. This one here. Unfortunately you, uh, you have missed how I replaced the lid switch but uh, it is done. I have re replaced it and now we try to power on the board and see what happens whether we have backlight by any chance so where's my, where's my panel it is here okay. 
So here we go. Like that, yes? Okay. Let's check with power. Let's check whether everything is in place before. Okay. Like that maybe. So power. 12 and 14, yes? Okay. I think the heating is getting warm. I can't believe this is, uh, was my first uh, lid switch fold. This was my first lid switch fold. Wonderful. We have the picture back. Perfect. Yeah, this was a pretty hard repair also for me. I've learned, learned something new. So back again, um, I've um, I have reassembled the complete device and uh, everything uh, was fine. I have display and so on. And uh, unfortunately the lid switch wa still wasn't working. So when I close, when I close the panel, the uh, display is supposed to go off. But it didn't. So I decided to check again and you know what? You know what? Look here. I have still the short between lid switch and ground. 13 ohms. Uh, how is this possible? <laughs> I have no idea because the no backlight issue went away after we have solved that. However, it seems it is not enough. Um, if something is still wrong here and now, yeah, we have to check what it is. So the first thing I will know is whether we have an issue here with the ribbon cable. Maybe. Now we remove it. No, the lid switch just died again. But why? Why? Why is my lid switch dying? From what? I've tested it with a magnet and it was fine and now it just died. Why? From what? Of course, I can just place another lid switch, but um, I really have to guess this won't solve the issue. Let's remove it. Let's remove it.
So what is killing my lid switch? Any idea? I have no idea. So, check with multimeter. And I still have the short. I still have the short. Okay, so we have an issue with the support. That's the issue with the support. Let's check continuity with the connector. I don't have connection to the connector, which is interesting. Okay, okay. So where is it here? It is here. We are free and then single one and another single one. Should be this wheel here. This one. Let's grab a bit and follow the signal. So let's check whether we have 14 ohms to ground here. Ground. And we do have 14 ohms to ground. So this is our line in question. So when we have these capacitors, and here we have resistor, which means 100 ohms. Which means we have 114 ohms here. When it goes here, to what? To this IC? What is it? To this we are. Let's open this one too. I'm sure we can figure it out. I'm pretty sure we can figure it out. Yeah. So, so what was it? 114? Let's check. And we do have 114 ohms to ground. So, and from here, do we have continuity to the connector? Here. Here. Okay. Once again. No? Okay. No? This one. This is our pin. So now, where is the short? This is, fortunately, we have this 100 ohms resistor here. We'll remove it and check on which side is the short. Okay? With some luck, it's one of these capacitors, all four, the resistance is quite high. Maybe uh, in a layer short, maybe. We'll find out.
rotate it a little bit like that. So, like that. So and now we have this. So what is the new reading? So we have on this side 70 ohm still, and this is open line now. So we have ever an issue with one of these capacitors or with this with this copper rail here. So, in summary, we do have an issue on the support. It is disconnected here, it is disconnected from the motherboard, and we still have a shorted line at the lid switch, which is, which very likely is the lid switch. It's uh, just a logical uh, assumption. However, this should be the lid switch, uh, the hall sensor. And um, well, we have here a partial short, here it is normal and here we have ground and it is su supposed to be ground. One pad uh, is supposed to be ground, but both should read in kilo ohms. But we only have one in kilo ohms. Uh, and and uh, yeah, now we have uh, figured out it is on the part of the rail between the pad and between the 100 ohms resistor here and everything which is left is one capacitor, two capacitor and three capacitor and then there is nothing more so we will remove one by one and till the short disappears Simple, no? Uh, like that. Flex. So, let us start with the biggest caps. Number one, multimeter, uh, here, here's a test point, ground, and 20 ohms, still, so the next cap. The next cap, please. And we do have mega ohms. This was a bad cap. Wonderful. Finally, this one here. This is a bad one. This board was pretty annoying. So now we solder everything back. So let them move back in place. Yeah, this is good. 
So now, uh, so where was my lid switch? Should work. Okay. 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 It's good. No? Let's check again. This is these two rounds. So here, yeah, this was a 14 ohms, and we have mega ohms. Wonderful. So now. And this is the coolest part. We'll check with the, with the magnet. Here is my magnet. Screwdriver. Screwdriver. Gone. Here. So. So, ground. You can't see. Here. Once again, so ground as a signal, you see, 4 mega ohms, and when I come with the magnet, ta da, it is short. When I go away, it is open. When I come with the magnet, it is short. Okay? And short. It needs a few seconds. It needs a few seconds, but uh, when it goes short. So, again, we will reassemble it and then we will uh, check the lid switch, the hall sensor, for working properly. Okay. Here yeah, I was already pretty convinced we are dealing with 
some weird uh, internal layer short, but uh, yeah, the outcome was a shorted capacitor. Can't believe. 13 ohms. Ja? Ach. Ich bin im Urlaub. Mach's einfach aus. This was a hell of a backlight issue. So, power. Needs a few seconds because of the CMOS res reset. Here's picture which is good so far but what about the lid So we are in Windows now. Now I close the lid and it goes off. God damn, it goes off. See? See, it was black, okay? Back again and it goes off. Wonderful. Back open. Yeah. Here we go. Hall sensor is working. Now we are done. Almost. Just uh, reassemble it and then we'll check again, but then we are really done. Okay, let's. This has touch. Touch. So, shut down. Wonderful. Okay. Okay, 
So Windows is up and running and now I close the lid again so you can watch the display disappearing. Maybe when I lift it like that. You see? It's black. Okay? Now I open it and it's, it's there. Black. Wonderful. 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 And all this without schematics. Because there just don't exist schematics for this board. So, um, yeah. The best thing you can do, and uh, I've also done it this way, is to work with uh, schematics of uh, sim similar devices. Uh, and uh, just hope uh, there are enough uh, similarities uh, so you can figure it out. Which we have uh, successfully done. So, um, as always, thank you for watching. I'm happy about uh, a like, a comment, or uh, if you subscribe my channel, I would be really happy. And so, see you the next time, and um, yeah.